Hey everybody, welcome back to part 5 of my guitar collection. We're moving on in the six strings, we're moving on to uh, semi hollow body construction guitars, out of which I've got five. Um, on the left here, this is my semi hollow six string in a T type. Just happens to be, yeah, the, so I've got a, I got a, I got a number of different T-types in a solid body and I also have a T-type in a semi hollow body and then I also think I've got a 12 string semi hollow T-type as well but we'll get to that when we get to the 12 strings 12 string electrics but anyway yeah so this is my my semi hollow T-type, and uh, it's a, uh, I've done really nothing to this guitar, put strap locks on it, roller saddles, uh, a lock nut, and I think lock and Um There's a, there's a video on this, as I recall. Basically, I saw it, and it was like a beautiful natural finish, and it's got, you know, polyester resin or, or epoxy resin kind of finish thing going on here, so. So yeah, it looks real pretty and stuff, despite the mother of toilet seat pick guard, but I mean, even that sort of works for it, so I think white would be just a little too plain on this. So, so yeah, so that's the semi-hollow body, and it, you know, behaves exactly like one would expect. It's got the, the semi-hollow tone, you can't really hear anything here, but, and other than that, it's a telly, so there it is. Then, let's see, the next one, this is one of my groats, and these are great guitars. Um, I don't know what it is about the ES-335, perhaps it's the fact that this is the guitar that I learned to play guitar on. Was I had a Sears Silvertone ES-335 clone that was kind of like this thing as far as the setup went. It had the big speak and the two humbuckers. But it had a it had a knife edge bridge on it and just regular tuners and stuff, so and it was a total piece of junk. I'm like, oh my god, that thing you know, horrible action, wouldn't stay in tune, pinging nut, you know, the big speed was unusable by and large, so yeah, this is a hard guitar, but but having to cut my teeth on a guitar that you just had to fight tooth and nail on really didn't make me a better player once I got my hands on a real guitar, you know. So it was like, oh my God, this is so much. You know, I got my hands, after playing that monstrosity, I got my hands on a real guitar. Like, uh, I think the first one I bought was that Fender 12. Now, this guy right here, the stick guitar on the end. That's the Fender 12 now. It's the original neck plate on it. And, uh, and yeah, so even going from like a, like a 6ES 335 Gibson thing to a 12 string Fender, it was actually almost easier to play that than it was to play this. But of course, once I got onto a real six string, like once I got my ESB LTD2, everything became just, you know, super simple, super simple. And yeah, I still need to try a Rickenbacker neck. I guess I gotta buy a Rick, so. But anyway, okay, so, yeah, Groats. Groats are real nice. Um, I bought this one just because it was pretty in a wine. It's dusty as heck right now, but yeah, it's a beautiful wine kind of uh, oil finish, satin oil finish. And it's a beautiful wine-colored groat, and it plays awesome and everything. You know, it's got really nice smooth. This is, I don't think I did anything to this, and these are real nice, so. Um, and then this one here, that one was like about 165 And then this one here was about 199 and it's a purple, it's a purple um, flame maple. And it's just gorgeous. Gorgeous. Oh my god, it's a gorgeous guitar. And of course, once again, it's a growth. It plays great. It's got a beautiful neck on it. 
everything. Can't say enough about these guitars. Great values, great values. Group guitars, check them out. Uh, moving right along, this one here is a fail. This was my first attempt at the North Carolina guitar build, which is still underway. My buddy's a NC Tar Heels fan, and uh, so I'm building a North Carolina Tar Heels themed guitar for him. And he specifically chose for a ES335 type with a Bigsby, more or less a, a Chuck Berry style guitar but in a North Carolina theme. So this was the first attempt and I stained it too dark of a blue and then tried to sand back the veneer and cut through and ruin the guitar as far as being stain grade. So then this became the guitar for the misting tests. There's a series of three videos on on the misting test. This is actually a misted mix of, of like two or three colors of paint. And, and then I just you know, gathered up what gold hardware I could from the kits and put it all together. I prefer bolt-on necks, and so even with my set necks, like if you look at this kit I made here, the uh, this is the antique. Here I used the actual you know fender type type neck plate on it to bolt it on. But yeah, I've found that you know two screws is enough. So on this one the heel was so narrow that the spacing on a regular neck plate wouldn't really work. So I just went with two screws and it works just fine. It works just fine. And I'm pretty pleased with the way the missing came out. I got a pretty good match on the neck and the body and everything and it looks okay. It looks better when it's cleaned up. There's a few flaws in the clear coat, a bit of runs and stuff, but I could still probably sand that and buff it out. So. So yeah, that's the North Carolina guitar number one fail. And then North Carolina kit number two is under construction way over there on the shelf in the corner next to the window. Then, uh, then this one here is the antique. There's a video on this. And uh, this, was, this was my first hollow body build. These two I bought just because they were pretty and they were inexpensive and I had a good vibe about Groat so and I wasn't disappointed I was not at all disappointed something told me they were going to be decent guitars and they are very decent guitars very decent guitars you know if you're looking to get into a decent ES335 it doesn't have you know the hottest pickups in the world or anything like that, and it's you know probably import electronics, but they've got nice necks, they've got decent bodies, they look great, and stuff like that. So yeah, if you're looking to get into an ES335, I definitely recommend taking a look at a Groat, for sure. Um, there are a couple other brands here that I've been, like Groat I've been impressed with, I've been impressed with uh, G-Style, I've been very impressed with the Rogue Rocketeer neck and I've also been impressed with a number of different acoustic brands um, let's see Vagona comes to mind I just picked up an acoustic 12 by them and uh, La Grima and uh, but anyway I'll cover that in the in the acoustics video chapter of this series so now, as far as the Les Pauls go, let's see. Um, like I said, this guy sounds like a telly. Oh, these all have that kind of hollow body thing going on as far as the tone goes. Um, this guy, otherwise, is a telly. Um, these two groups, they're all classic ES-335 sounds. So, yeah. And that one, actually all four are, basically. Because none of them has anything really unusual going on in the pickups. They're all just more or less kind of baseline sort of pickups. So, And as far as like mods go, I showed you the mods on that. There's a video on that one. I've done nothing at all to either of these really. I don't think I even put strap locks on them. So. And then I mean, they, don't, they don't need a whole lot. These are nice guitars. Um, this guy here, 
it's by and large a kit bash of all the gold parts because the other one's going to be done in North Carolina so it's getting silver and white stuff. So yeah, this is more or less a kit bash of all the gold parts from the two kits and what else was laying about. And uh, once again, nothing fancy about the pickups or anything like that. So this doesn't really have much in the way of mods. I slapped a, a black nut and a gold bar on it and uh, didn't have a roller for it or anything like that. It was a trapeze. It was set up for a trapeze. So. Which would have worked nicely because his is going to get a big speed the way that this thing has a big speed. So, and then this one here, there's a video on this. This was originally going, was inspired by broke type guitars. And that's why it has like an insane amount of inlay stickers on it. I was going to put some scroll work, wood scroll work on the body too, but decided it looked better without it, so... So yeah, this is like my ES3, my number one ES335 right here, I guess you'd say. And maybe I should hop it up a little bit. I don't know. Maybe, I mean, I've got, what, four to work with here now, in the way of ES335, so I might be able to play around with different pickup configurations and stuff like that. And, you know, get them all upgraded to roller, roller TOMs, because, uh... Yeah, this is the only one that's got a roller tunematic on it. And you could get a roller tuner on that, and roller on that. Yeah, this is nice. That's, that one's got the tra uh, trapeze type tail piece. This has got the stop tail. I've actually got a silver fine tuner stop tail I could slap on this thing. And, you know, locking tuners. And if I want to mess with the nuts. But, like I said, these grids, they don't really need anything. If you're just looking for a for a traditional standard kind of a, a ES335 type, they get the job done. Real nice, real nice. As I recall, I took the pick the pick guard off of this one to show more of the body. It originally had a pick guard like that too. So, so yeah, I think that's going to do it for the semi hollow bodies, and then in six strings. I don't really have any true hollow body electrics, which means I guess in six strings the next construction type would be acoustics. So until the next video, everybody have a good one.